Uh, thanks, Joel, for the fantastic overview of the safe coin and how it operates. So then, uh, now that we have this coin that has an intrinsic value of data, so one safe coin equals a certain amount of gigabytes of data, right? And that amount of gigabytes of data that you can extract from the network with a safe coin fluctuates based on the number of vaults that enter the network. So uh, one day we might have 10 gigabytes per safe coin. Another day we might have 10 terabytes uh, of data per safe coin. So that would suggest a baseline value of a safe coin. So then on top of that, we can have layers such as applications. Applications, for example, like decentralized exchanges. So uh, one of the main ideas that uh, we have is called SafeX, S-A-F-E-X protocol. So this protocol could define a very standard messaging system to define contracts. Um, SafeX protocol is based on something called FIX protocol, which is an already well-established, well-used for the last 22 years system that allows current uh, exchanges to transmit a basic message and understand that basic message from uh, the source to the uh, recipient of the message to understand that something happened financially. So like the example would be a sale of a gold future, for example. So a contract that uh, has uh, gold, a certain amount of gold, and then a certain price, it gets sent to an exchange, and that exchange, if they accept that deal, they get the gold contract, they send the cash over to the originator. So we can devise that system and implement it into the safe network and take advantage of the encrypted processing that safe network allows us to do, which is safe network is the software that does the uh, distribution of, of data and the encryption of data messaging, right? So we have something called SafeX protocol like this. So using SafeX protocol, we can build applications that understand each other. All applications will use a standard or can use the standard or define their own standard like a SafeX protocol, for example, and this way, we can send things like digital items, for example, and we can define prices for them. We can define expirations for those items, for example. Uh, for example, let's say you want to share a, a photo for one month and then have it deleted, or you want to share a video for one hour and then have it deleted. So you can use something like a SafeX protocol, define the messaging of a certain data, and then have that data be blocked off, for example. This is one idea. So a main idea that we'll start with is very simple. We'll take a, uh, a Bitcoin and allow you to trade it for the safe coin, right? Uh, this is the first way that we can use the SafeX protocol. We can give a definition for transacting a 10-minute consensus uh, currency for an instantaneous consensus currency. Uh, so this is very novel in and of itself. So once we establish the fact that we can transmit Bitcoins for safe coins, then we can do various different things. Where, for example, let's say you had a physical item, you wanted to sell it to someone, and you wanted to ship it. So you can list an item on the safe network through an application, such as eBay. Let's say eBay safe network style, right? So you would make an item, define its item's attributes in a safe X message. Then if anyone wants to purchase that item, they must fulfill the message. So let's say, uh, let's sell the teacup for 10 safe coins, for example, right? So then we would say teacup is 10 safe coins. Then a person would say, well, I want teacup. So they send 10 safe coins. Then teacup contract will request shipping information. And then person can fill out shipping information, send on the 10 safe coins, the owner of this teacup will receive 10 safe coins and where to ship the item to. Then, person who purchased the teacup will receive the, will receive the, the teacup and the originator will receive the coin and then the contract is fulfilled. So this is accomplished with just a simple message and the client, of course. The client is interpreting the message standard. Yep. So, uh, this is just an entry to the possibilities to use safe coins. Then at the end of the day, while we can buy and sell things like teacups and chairs and uh, what have you, and bitcoins, at the end of the day, the safe coin will buy you data. 
And as Joel described to us, data is an asset. So if at the end of the day you can buy an asset called data, you can access data, there is people and industries on the planet that consistently always want to store data, that consistently need safe coins, for example, to store data. So uh, we, here are some figures. Uh, on the planet Earth, there's about 861 million websites from Forbes magazine. Uh, this is numbers pulled from a Forbes magazine article. So if you think right now how to host all of those, all of those websites, it's, uh, maybe you'll spend uh, $10 per month to host all 861 million websites, assuming that they all are hosted on a very basic level, right? So then, uh, so $10, so we're talking, it's about um, maybe $8 billion every month to host every website. So what's happening actually? We're clearly demonstrating that people want to host their data. People actually want to host their websites. It's about 10% of all the people have a website, essentially with 861 million websites and having 7 billion approximately people, that means that 10% of the people want to host some kind of content on a domain name. Okay, so understanding that, we know that people have a demand for this network. People have a demand for inexpensive hosting. So Safe Network provides that, very straightforward. Uh, you acquire safe coins through farming. Farming, uh, farming means that you are giving and confirming data to people who want it. So that means the network is functioning and revolving because people are asking for data. And in the first place, people put data. So we already know people want to put data. Then uh, which data people want to get is now irrelevant to the person who hosts because the person who hosts has like all the data or a piece of all the data rather. So then if someone wants to access one data, then a farming reward occurs. So only when data is relevant to a person is when farming occurs and new safe coins are generated. So this means that imagine the first 10% of the coins that are issued now were spent on putting data. If no one gets the data, no new safe coins are generated. That's pretty straightforward. But then people will start to access data. So then farmers will receive on a random, very distributed basis, safe coins. Because how do you know that you have the correct piece? Like you can't just say, oh, I want just the popular files. You see, you have all the files, all the pieces of files. So it's very fair, the algorithm itself. Uh, 